Good evening. I will now open the September 12th Stillwater City Council regular meeting. Bam. Our first item is Pledge of Allegiance, and we are so excited today to have Eliza Neal with us. And she is, I'll let her tell you later, but she is going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. So please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Eliza. May I ask you a few questions? I, I did get to meet Eliza this uh, maybe month ago, two months ago, at the food trucks and tunes, and I was really pleased to meet her and excited to know that she would be interested in doing this for us. Um, Eliza, what uh, year are you in school? Um, fifth. Fifth grade? I was going to say high school. No. <laughs> fifth grade. Which school do you go to? Will Rogers. Will Rogers. What a nice school. Yes. And what's your favorite subject? I think writing. Oh, we do need good writers. That's wonderful. When, when we spoke this summer, you told me that you had spent quite a bit of time during the summer reading and that that was one of your favorite things, which would go with writing. What was the favorite book you had this summer? It's actually a series. It's called Warriors. Warriors. Is that violent? <laughs> <laughs> Unless you say cats fighting, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I might just have to read that in the daytime, not the night. <laughs> Any other questions for Eliza? I think that she has a riddle for us. Do you have a riddle for us? Yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, first, before you tell us your riddle, what does your dad do for the city? He is an engineer plumber. <laughs> <laughs> an engineer plumber. <laughs> is that on your business card? <laughs> 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 well, we are very happy to have your dad working for us in the city of Stillwater. As a he does a nice plumber. job as an engineer plumber and perhaps <laughs> other etc. things. Eliza, what is your joke for us? Where do you park a camel? Where do you park a camel? In, is that specific to the city of Stillwater? No. <laughs> or just in general? Do you pay parking meters? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I give up. Eliza, what is it? In Camelot. In a Camelot. Oh. That's pretty good. That's a good one. That's pretty Hang good. On. I'm writing it down. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you very much. <coughs> if you'll stand here, we'll get our picture taken together. I'm digging the plumber. It's hilarious. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. A plumber with an engineering degree would be able to do so much. That takes us to no, item three, consent docket. Counselors, is are there any items or an item that you would like to remove from the consent docket? A motion to approve consent docket. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the consent docket. Please vote. And that passes four to zero. May I make a, a, a extemporaneous comment here? We do, um, we are looking very forward to having the mayor back mm -hmm. at our next meeting. And so we'll muddle through today without her and uh, see her on our next meeting. Item number four, public comment on agenda items not scheduled for public hearing. We don't have any speakers. So we item uh, six, public hearings. 
Item A, public input regarding a request for a map amendment to rezone 421 East Thomas Avenue from industrial, light industrial to commercial general. Mr. Dorman, do we have good notice on yes, this? Mr. McNichol. And Michael Bailey will be re Thank providing you, the report tonight. Hi, Michael Beatty. We have um, a map amendment rezoning uh, at the Grand Lake Mental Health at uh, 421 East Thomas. The property is located on North Perkins, just south of Thomas Avenue on the south side. It's an existing building. Uh, it's currently zoned industri light industrial. We have uh, general industrial across the street, uh, across Perkins, and to the north we have general commercial and to the south we have residential single family. There's a street view of the existing facility looking to the south, uh, be the southwest from the northeast. Just a comparison tables of the differences in the zoning. Uh, highlighted the section that requires the rezoning. The building is going to have a change of use. It was a Kind of a call center before and they were going to take the building and reuse it as a as a mental health facility it's not allowed in industrial zoning but it is allowed in cg uh, and, and if you go back and look at the previous zoning there's not really any other type of office zoning or anything adjacent to it that would allow uh, a less intense use it'd be a, a, a type of spot zoning so this is the best rezoning to allow that type of use. Uh, just a general comparison of some of the setbacks and bulk requirements of the different zonings uh, between the two. Not a lot is going to be impacted by this down zoning. Uh, there are greater setbacks and, and uh, uh, spaces required for the industrial zoning. The Planning Commission recommended approval of the rezoning, five to nothing. Uh, do you have any other questions? Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Beatty. And I will open the public comment, uh, public hearing time. And since we don't have anybody signed up to speak, I will close the public hearing. Mr. Beatty. Okay. Um, you can accept the Planning Commission's request, uh, you can, or uh, approval of the request, or you can deny the request or, or the re recommendation. Any questions or comments? I, I appreciated the chart with the differences between the zoning districts. That was helpful. Yeah, very helpful, thank you. Yes, the, the packet material w was much, uh, much help. Thank you. Thank you. Move to approve. Second. Okay. We have a motion to to approve to accept the planning commission recommendation, and a second. Please vote. And that plat passes four to zero. Uh, item seven: general orders. We have a right of way agreement with the Islamic Society of Stillwater. Mr. McNichol. Ms. Paula Dennison. Development Services will be providing the report. Good evening, Vice Mayor and Council. Thank you um, for the opportunity to come and present this before you this evening. Staff had a request for a right-of-way agreement between the Islam Islamic Society of Stillwater and the City of Stillwater um, for their new property that they have developed at 616 North Washington Street. I have thrown in a couple of pictures here so you can have a good idea of what was out there existing and then through the redevelopment what also has occurred. This is Washington Street and this is looking north. This corner is Cantwell, is the street coming in from the west. So this is the north eastern corner of the Islamic Society's property. And you can see that there was already a small retaining wall on their property. And as you can tell, it carried on down the Washington Street right of way on the west side of the street. And this is pre-construction looking north. 
what the Islamic society has done is they have come in and they have removed a number of the individual structures. They have combined the lots and they have built their facility on a larger piece of property that they had. In order to do so, they needed some elevation changes. So they removed the existing um, retaining wall that was along there. They built it up more so that they could put their elevation changes in there. So what they have done is this is looking north on Washington. The corner of their piece that we were just looking at is in, about in this vicinity at the far end. It's hard to see. But they have extended the retaining wall along their frontage of North Washington. They have wrapped it around Connell, and you can see that they are minimizing it as they head back west. They have also wrapped it around Cantwell. Again, they are minimizing it as they head back west, and this is looking down Cantwell. And then this is south from that Cantwell-Washington intersection. And you can tell the elevation changes that they have had. There are some public utilities that the city already had in that area that the shorter retaining wall um, was helping to protect. And this, again, retaining wall is protecting those utilities as well. The recommendation from staff, we reviewed it and um, we had a number of conversations with the Islamic Society. Um, unfortunately, the retaining wall was put in prior to the approval. Hello, we're here tonight for approval of the retaining wall that you saw the pictures of. Um, but they, um, they did present the request to staff. Staff met, a variety of number of departments met to discuss if there were any issues or concerns that staff could identify with the recommendation to move forward with this retaining wall and staff could identify none. So therefore your recommendation from your staff is for approval of this retaining wall, which is the right of way agreement authorizing um, the city manager to sign the agreement with the Islamic Society. And I'll be happy to answer any questions that you've got. Councilors. I just wanna make sure that I read this correct. So say there's a utility problem and we have to go in and tear the <coughs> retaining wall down we're not responsible to put that back. That is correct. Because we're doing this agreement. That is correct. It is actually in the agreement that the Islamic Society is responsible not only for the construction, but for the maintenance of that retaining wall within the public right of way. Okay. And then my next question, which is, I guess, kind of just want your thought. Recently, we denied a request to allow a fence to be put in someone's front yard, which was in the right of way. So now we have a request in front of us to allow a retaining wall in a right of way. Are these two separate things? Is it the same thing? I mean, kind of walk me through that because obviously we said no there, so. Certainly, be happy to. Um, a couple of things, differences. Yeah. A couple of differences. Is the request for the, the previous request that the council um, denied the, the right of way agreement for the fence. Um, eight foot tall fence created such a separation between adjacent properties um, that that was a complete difference in this parcel where they're not even going tall enough with this retaining wall, so it would require a building permit even. So that's, that's a difference. The height is a major difference. The purpose is another difference. Um, in this regard, there was the existing retaining wall along a portion of the property and continuing on up North Washington as that photo demonstrated. So there was already the presumption, incorrect or not, that there was the ability to replace with like, and the Islamic Society just went a little further and accommodated their, their needs on their property, as well as accommodating some of the needs of the public infrastructure that's existing on the property. So those are just a few of the differences that you can directly compare between the two. Okay. Any other questions for me? Yes. Was, was the existing retaining wall in the right of way as well? And yes. did it have an agreement or how, how was it there? No, um, we, we didn't um, check to see how long the retaining wall had been there, but it had been there for a very long time. And it had been through many rounds of maintenance, 
when it was uh, falling apart or breaking or falling down. Um, Right-of-way agreements are a fairly recent use of the city to allow things like the, the private use within a public right-of-way. Typically, if I may, typically what we see in right-of-way agreements, we see a lot of private water or sewer service lines, not the mains, because for whatever reason, there's the inability to get an easement from your next door neighbor to cross their property with the private service line and the main may not be feasible to be extended just to serve your house, for instance. So we see right-of-way agreements in that regard for that private use of the public way, not very intrusive typically, and that's one of the things that staff evaluates. Thanks. Mm -hmm. There, since the retaining wall is slightly higher, site um, studies were done at the corners. Yes, no impact at all, sight um, distance and visualization in pulling into or out of any of those intersections, there's no impediment that we have been able to determine. Great, thank you. Yes. Other questions? Okay. okay. Once again, staff does recommend approval. I will make a motion to approve staff's recommendation to approve the right-of-way agreement. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve resolution number CC 2016-26. Please vote. Mm -hmm. Oh, right, the right-of-way agreement. Oh, I'm just jumping ahead. <laughs> I'm checking you, Liz, to make sure you're watching. Okay, <laughs> Liz is paying attention. Yes. And that passes four to zero. Thank you. Okay, now we're gonna do resolution number CC-2016-26. A resolution of the city, Stillwater City Council opposing the adoption of state question 779. Pass it down, uh, so just to make sure everybody's on the same charge. This is the one that is on the rail. We had made a change, and I think it went up on the web before Will had sent this last email to me. Okay. Okay, counselors, I think you've all seen this. Um, I did, uh, Mr. Dorman, I, I did just have one revision. Um, in the first line where it says the state vocational technical education system, that needs to be statewide career and technical education system. Okay. Do you? Okay. Yeah. Counselors, any other uh, comments? I think just a comment, I speak myself, but I'm sure the council all feels this way that um, this is not a stand against public education not one bit, we all support public education, we all um, care deeply about public education, we're a public ed education community. This is saying that as elected officials, one thing we're in control of is sales tax and we know firsthand what an increase in sales tax will do to a city like Stillwater. Um, as many people are aware or not aware, um, the only revenue, one of the only revenue generating sources for cities are sales tax. We don't have any ad valorem taxes. We're one of the only states in the country that does not get any ad valorem tax. And so now, with this state question, they're also wanting to put more on the cities and to fund education. And, um, you know, so for me, my perspective, I'm voting on this not because I'm against public, public education. I completely support it. I'm doing this because I don't feel like this is the proper way to get this funding. I feel like there should have been more action, in, in my opinion. Um, we have to hold people accountable to figure out the way to truly fund this in the way it was meant to be funded and not with this type of action. So that's why I am in favor of this and uh, will be supporting it. Thank you. I think I wanna thank everyone who emailed me their um, viewpoints and their positions and why. I think one of the most important things you can do as a citizen is 
let us know how you're feeling about things and what your perspective is, because we all have a perspective on things, and it, I think it helps to have your different perspectives. I'm going to ditto what Councillor Nahara said. Um, I am in, it, in education, and my family's in education, uh, but my role as a city councillor allows me to broaden that view a little bit and, and make me see what's the most important for all of the citizens of Stillwater. And as I think about growth and businesses and people who already struggle to pay the current sales tax, what that would do to them, I just would hate to have that um, be detriment to the growth of Stillwater. Um, and I'm also going to ditto what Councilor Nahara said. I think that teachers and children deserve the best possible opportunities for their education and resources. I just don't think this sales tax is the way to do it so thank you um, councillor joyce i don't have a, a lot to add to that i i agree i mean i think that it, it the resolution from the council is a resolution um from from us in these positions uh in recognition of what um an increase in our city sales tax um, will, what effect that'll have on, on local business and on our ability to fund government um, it's it's not at all uh, honestly, it wouldn't really matter what the increase in sales tax was for, uh, whether it was for education or anything else. I think we'd have to stand here and say, this will be problematic and difficult for the city to continue to fund the services you elected us uh, to make sure we were able to fund. And um, that's our position here is, is based on this issue being a sales tax. It's not a, at all a position based on um, the, the, you know, need for funding in the education sector which is absolutely there i have four kids in our public school system here in stillwater and they need more funding uh, but the state legislature needs to find a better way to do it than this thank you any other comments just for clarification i want to make certain we're working from the document the, the second document that we handed out the, the online yes mm -hmm. okay other than we added a couple of things at the beginning uh, last week that it's the document that the public has already seen. Mm -hmm. Now there, there would be one amendment to it in the first paragraph. Uh, uh, Councilor Zanotti asked that we strike the word state vocational and insert the word statewide career and then it will continue to say technical education system. So that would be the only amendment to this version choose to, to adopt it in that manner. I would also like to thank the people who contacted me about this uh, resolution, uh, both for our, um, uh, for us writing this resolution, and this is a resolution is the way the council can communicate with um, its citizens. So it's, it's really a, our, just our communication. Um, so people for and against, and um, I had a very lovely discussion with um, a teacher who was a, a long uh, career uh, professional in our, our public school system, and she was quite um, in support of us um, making this resolution. She said there are many, many teachers who are not in favor of the penny sales tax. I had a couple of other um, people who, who said, you know, given your background, how can you possibly be against the sales tax? And it is exactly my background in Oklahoma that says this is not the right way to do this. Um, we have, you know, experience with uh, lotteries and parimutuel betting and House Bill, House Bill 1017. And um, honestly, uh, I think this feels to me like a bone, uh, and it would be uh, difficult to come back even in a couple of years and say, wait a second, we need more funding, and it would be like, oh, yeah, we already gave you whole millions of dollars of sales tax, and no, you, we can't redo that. Um, this is definitely um, impacting the people who can least afford it. I would absolutely like to um, say that we have superior educators in this town. A uh, $5,000 raise doesn't even touch the appropriate amount of money that they deserve. Um, I hope that we will make sure that uh, that message 
gets spread to many and that all of us who um, oppose or not this resolution will carefully um, investigate people that we are voting for at our state level and do our homework, make sure that we encourage people to run for state offices that have uh, vision and courage to do this the correct way. I'll make a motion to approve resolution CC 2016-26. With the proposed amendment. With the proposed amendment. <laughs> Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the resolution with the amendment. Please vote. Thank you, that passes four to zero. Takes us to ordinances. Mr. Dorman. On first reading, ordinance number 3348, an ordinance rezoning attractive land located at 2306 North Washington Street from CS Community Shopping District and O Office District to CG Commercial General District. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> that was well, lovely. I don't know what else to say. I mean, it's, a, it's an item that you've already advanced to ordinance. Correct. The previous meeting, I believe, the in August. Right, and everyone remembers that was the uh, car wash. Any comments or questions? Motion to advance the second reading. Second. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I said that loud. That's okay, we like enthusiasm up here. We have a motion and a second to advance that to second reading. Please vote. And that passes four to zero. Item B. Ordinance number 3349, an ordinance amending the Stillwater City Code by amending Chapter 12, Businesses, by repealing in its entirety Article 6, Massage Therapy, deleting sections 12234 through 12300. Uh, this is in response to yet another state preemption into areas that cities have traditionally regulated, that being massage parlors. Uh, the state of Oklahoma adopted a comprehensive a uh, set of statutes back in their, their spring session and basically have decided that they have they want to occupy the field there so it is my recommendation that if the state of Oklahoma wants it you should give it to them uh, we don't really uh, we have a few licenses that we issue every year uh, it's not a something that's particularly easy to do anyway so uh, with the new state regulations, I mean, we would have to completely rewrite the code to stay in compliance. So my recommendation is to uh, get out of this business. Okay. <laughs> A motion to advance ordinance number 3349 to second reading. Second. We have a motion and a second. Can I ask a question? Yes, you may. Can I ask you a question? <laughs> <laughs> city council, city attorney. Um, does this have any effect on our existing license holders? I mean, will they have to, I mean, they does it matter one way or the other if we do this? Okay, now, so, it, so. It doesn't matter what we do. I mean, if we, even if we left it on the books, they have to get a state license. Still to, okay. There's no way we could, if, if we could help Reduce the people you, who have the, the, fee. the permits now, we would certainly do that. But because of the way the state came in and basically occupied the field, we don't have any authority to tell them that you can have a city permit but you don't need a state license so I mean, can we have a city permit in addition to the state license you could but it would just be it would be superfluous i guess is probably the best way to say it i mean i guess you could register them if you're something along those lines something similar to what we do to taxi cabs but unless you're actually going in and and regulating the facilities and stuff that are involved there really isn't much of a municipal purpose served by just simply registering. It would simply be a means of maybe raising a little revenue, and that's about it. <laughs> it's never a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's not true. Sometimes it's a bad thing. <laughs> did, did you say that with enthusiasm? Uh, not very much, no. <laughs> okay. We do. Any other questions? We do have a motion and a second to advance this to second reading. Please vote. And that passes four to zero. 
Item A under second reading, Mr. Dorman. Ordinance number 3347, an ordinance amending the Stillwater City Code by amending Chapter 43, Vehicles for Hire, Section 43.3, Registration Required and Declaring an Emergency. <laughs> this is the, the uh, resurrection of the old bus ordinance that was part of the taxi cab ordinance that we eliminated last year when the state preempted us on taxi cabs. And uh, so this would basically allow the city to regulate purely buses that basically operate within the city limits exclusively or within the immediate area <coughs> of the city. Uh, and we have established a, a process for, for permitting those, those uh, types of conveyances. Uh, there would be two votes on this one. You would have a vote for the, if you, you choose to pass it on second reading, uh, and then I'm asking that you also declare it an emergency. Uh, and I will tell you that we are working very hard to get the uh, forms and stuff ready so that when it publishes on Thursday, assuming you do pass it tonight, uh, the, we're, the city will be ready to start issuing permits to those entities that have expressed a desire to be licensed in this manner. Okay, so our first vote will be to adopt? To adopt on the second reading, yes ma'am. Okay. So moved. Second. We have a m motion and a second to adopt ordinance number 3347. Please vote. And that is passes three to one. Uh, oh, you voted against it. Okay, so a second vote on the emergency clause. Motion to declare emergency. Second. Motion a second to declare an emergency. Please vote. And that passes three to one. Takes us quickly down our agenda. We are now on reports from officers and boards. Mr. Dorman, do you have any items for us? I have a, a number of executive session requests for tonight. Uh, request an executive session pursuant to 25 OS subsection 307B4 to engage in confidential communications regarding the pending claim filed by Salisbury Industries. It's my opinion that public disclosure of this matter will seriously impair the ability of the City Council to process this claim and or conduct an investigation and or prosecute, defend any resulting litigation or proceeding in the public interest. Second, I request an executive session pursuant to 25 OS subsection 307B3 to engage in confidential communications regarding the purchase or appraisal of real property. Finally, request an executive session pursuant to 25 OS subsection 307C10 for the purpose of conferring on matters pertaining to economic development, including the transfer of property, financing, or the creation of a proposal to entice a business to locate within the city of Stillwater because public disclosure of the matter to be discussed would interfere with the development of products and services and would violate the confidentiality of the business. Is that all? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Dorman. We will uh, do the finish this meeting, do this utility authority meeting, and then the uh, Ec economic development authority meeting, and then do our executive sessions. Correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay, Mr. McNichol, would Thank you like you, to Vice make Mayor. any announcements? I, I would. Um, unfortunately, uh, the beginning of school brings a lot of new people to, to town. Also, brings a lot of things that people covet other than the owners. Mm -hmm. um, one of those items that has been disappearing in mass quantities this year are bicycles. And we would very much encourage the owners of bicycles to record because they are pricey. Uh -huh. Bicycles, <laughs> back in my day, they were, <laughs> weren't quite as expensive as they are now, but uh, bicycles have a serial number on them. And what we would like you to record is the color, the, the model, and a serial number that is stamped into the frame somewhere. Uh, and one other precaution that we would urge is by a quality, and that generally means reasonably expensive, locking me mechanism, whether it's cable or uh, padlock or whatever it may be, that is not susceptible to uh, bolt cutters. Okay. And those items would help uh, the police department uh, greatly in trying to find your bicycle and if we recovering recover it be able to reunite you with it we 
We literally give away hundreds of bicycles a year because we can't find the owners. Hmm. So it'd be easy to take a picture of your bike with your phone. Right. And even a picture of a the picture of the serial number. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Take you about 30 seconds, save a lot of trouble later. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else, Mr. McNichol? No, thank you. Okay. Uh, City Council, any announcements? I do. Um, Stillwater Fire intern Ashley Evans recently received a scholarship from the International Association of Fire Chiefs. Ashley is a senior at Oklahoma State University studying fire protection and safety engineering technology. So congratulations, Ashley. Good job. Anything else? I do have an announcement as well. Uh, the city of Stillwater was recently named a bronze level bicycle friendly business by the League of American Bicyclists, sticking with the bicycle theme. Um, <laughs> this award is presented to big businesses with an excellent commitment to bicycling. So congratulations to the city. I'd just like to add an, a, a kudo to that. The, the Bicycle Pedestrian Accessibility Committee has been working on moving, uh, actually moving um, Stillwater from one level of award from bronze to platinum and uh, in re recruiting businesses to be business friendly, which is not actually very difficult mm -hmm. for businesses who are listening, um, will help the city make that, that leap. And this is something um, I think, Councillor Joyce, your company yep. was the first company in Stillwater to receive this um, recognition. and. It's, it's kind of an enticement for the kind of people we want to live in Stillwater. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. So, great, great job, City of Stillwater, too. Councilor Nahara, do you have anything? I don't have any. You don't have? <laughs> I got skipped. Oh, my gosh. I'm sure there's... It's okay. I'm, I think there's something you could probably say. <laughs> With enthusiasm. I've said enough. Okay. Food, trucks, and tunes, Friday night. Oh, yeah. Or Saturday night. Food trucks and oh, tunes yeah. will be Friday night. Friday night. Friday yeah. night, that's right. That's my downtown. Okay. Before the game. Yeah. Before the game. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Did you say that? Yeah, food trucks and tunes. I went Friday night. Okay. It was awesome. Great. Great weather. Or, yeah, I went when it was a little cooler, and I had the I don't know, I don't care. Yes. Big yellow one. It's really good. I recommend it. All, I recommend all of them, but I don't know, I don't care. It's a good one. You know that uh, reminds me That's the, the uh, Boomer Blast. We we didn't we haven't we have haven't ha not had a meeting. We have not since uh, Labor Day weekend. That was a great event at the lake. I hope um, if you missed it mm -hmm. that you'll put it on your calendar for the next time it rains on July fourth. <laughs> <laughs> well, and if I may, um, if there's been some criticism in the city for not having a secondary location where we can park 2,500 cars and a safe open area to uh, display the fireworks. If somebody knows of one, <laughs> we could sure use some help because uh, Boomer Lake just seems to be the perfect place. Uh, many years ago, we did it at Lewis Field. Obviously, there's so much commercial and residential development there now that we can't. Um, and we just don't have a nice wide open spot where we can park 2,500 cars to, yeah. to, for backup events. So if somebody knows someplace, let me know. Well, I had two specific citizen um, commendations of the city on how well the traffic was handled getting in and out of Boomer Lake for Boomer Blast. Mm -hmm. They said, you know, got their car and folks were handling traffic and got them out of there quickly. And mm -hmm. so I, I was told it was very well run. Maybe we could have it and just have everyone ride their bicycle. <laughs> that is a great idea. There is that. It is a great idea. You're welcome. Yes. <laughs> we have those hundreds of bicycles we could give people. We do. <laughs> oh, they require a lot less parking. Yeah. And probably would not rut the uh, grass. <laughs> but I think the, field, the food trucks were especially busy that night. Mm -hmm. And it was a gorgeous night. It was. Wonderful weather. Uh, we are down to appointments. Rural Water Advisory Board. We do have um, a person who has applied for the seat that has been vacated by Mr. Jerry, Dr. Jerry Horn, Jerry Horn. I would like to thank Jerry Horn for his service on the Rural Water Advisory Board and uh, nominate um, 
make a motion to approve Billy Clay. Actually, he was approved by the Rural Water Com uh, Board, and they send their recommendation to us for acknowledgement. So um, I still would nominate, nominate him. Uh, Billy Clay for Rural, Wider Rural Water Advisory Board. A second? A second. second. Motion and a second. For Mr. Clay for the Rural Water Advisory Board, please vote. That passes four to zero. Thank you, Mr. Clay. We'll look forward to having you on that advisory board. Uh, second, a planning commission. We've had a, a vacancy on the planning commission for a while. Um, Zelt Wilkins has uh, applied for this position. I spoke to Mr. Wilkins this morning and I liked him very much. This is just a personal thing. He said, oh, I live near where you live at Oak Creek. That is the best designed place in the city. <laughs> <laughs> so I told him I would absolutely nominate him to. <laughs> so uh, nominating Mr. Zelt Wilkins. Second. Motion and a second for Mr. Wilkins. Please vote. And that passes four to zero. Uh, this meeting is adjourned. No, no, no. Oh no! Oh, can I recess? Recess. Okay. Do I do I need a motion to do recess? We get to go home? No, you recess. <laughs> I'll just okay. I'll just. Re oh, I really <laughs> wanted to. <pass. laughs> We're getting, we're getting oh. technical. <laughs> the little things. Okay. I think I'll recess this meeting and go to the Stillwater Utilities Authority. We'll get the defibrillator. <laughs> do we have one in this room? <laughs> okay. We really okay. Do. Good deal. <coughs> uh, so now I will call the Stillwater Utilities Authority regular meeting for September 12th to order. Consent docket. Counselors, any items that you would like to discuss or remove from consent docket? Motion to approve the consent docket. Second. Motion and a second to approve the consent docket. Please vote. And that passes four to zero. Now we are running right through this to general orders. Uh, approve the sole source purchase of og and &E transmission poles and labor up to $100,600, $100, including a 5% contingency. Do I read this or do you read this? Because I can hardly read it. <laughs> I'd be happy to read it, but okay. Oh, I can do it. it. Includes a 5% contingency and authorize expenditures for this purchase from the Transmission System Modification Project Account, SUA 16-48. Mr. McNichol. Lauren Smith, our Thank electric you. director, has Thank a you. report on this. Tonight. Oh, good. Good evening, trustees. Lauren Smith, electric utility director. Uh, we're currently working on uh, several transmission modifications to our 69,000 volt transmission system. Um, the, the, a couple key benefits that uh, will come out of this is, as what we always try to do is increase reliability. Uh, it, it allows us to quickly switch around our system uh, when we have uh, issues, as well as it provides a second output source from the new Stillwater Energy Center. Um, in the, in the very beginning of this project, we started looking at routes and how we could uh, route these new transmission lines and move them around the city. And it seemed like uh, no matter which route we chose, uh, we had to cross uh, OG&E's 138 kV lines that run straight down Perkins Road. You can see the mouse uh, where I'm at right here. The, their, their lines run right down the east side of Perkins Road. And the green line that I'm following right here is the route of our new line. And right here at Airport and Jardot, we intersect. And so we need to cross them. And since we have a lower voltage of 69,000 volts, uh, we need to pass underneath them. And so really this is just a sole source purchase for them to replace three poles 
to lift their lines up so that we can run under them. And since it's their lines, their, their stuff, it's really kind of a sole source purchase. Um, as you read the recommendation, I can read it again if you'd like. Uh, or, or do you have any questions before oh. I read the recommendation again? Any questions? Mr. Smith, if you'd like to read the recommendation. I can do it again. Okay. Staff recommends that the trustees approve the sole source purchase of OG, uh, of OG and E transmission poles and labor up to $100,600, which includes a 5% contingency and authorized expenditures for this purchase from the transmission system modification project account. Thank you very much. That was nicely read. Right, thank you. <laughs> Motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second to approve. Please vote. That takes us to reports from officers and boards. Uh, Mr. Dorman. Nothing to report. Mr. McNichol, general manager. I do. Thank you. Um, we had a short-term outage Sunday evening, yesterday evening, um, caused by a squirrel that got into a, a tight spot in a transformer. And one thing I'd really like the public to know is when you call BLS to report an outage and you get a report recording, it means we know. Um, it, truly, if you've tried to call two or three times and you continue to get that recording, it means that our call volume is so high with people trying to tell us that the electricity is out that uh, uh, we already know. And it would be good unless there's an emergency if you don't call uh, the police about that. Okay. Uh, because it ties up uh, emergency services. And the other thing that uh, you really need to know is if uh, a traffic light is out because of a power outage, it needs to be treated as a four-way stop. Um, just in the event that we haven't had the opportunity to get a four-way stop to a location where there's a light out. So. Thank you. In the report. Good Thank reminder. You. Good reminder. Trustees. I was just say, Mr. Smith, in a few weeks we're going to be celebrating a grand opening yes. that I think my dad probably has circled on the calendar. Yes. <laughs> um, ready to rip for the ribbon cutting on the yes. 26th? 27th. 27th. Okay. Mm -hmm. Four o'clock. Invitations are getting ready to go out. We're just moving as fast as we can to get invitations out. Get all set up. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Yes, very exciting. <clears throat> Thank you, Trustee Zanotti. that real quick we, we scheduled that for four o'clock on on the 27th to try and get the public out um, and it is an event that is open to the public and so we would strong we're gonna we're gonna publicize that but we would strongly encourage anyone who's interested in seeing this 70 million dollar investment to come out and take a take a first-hand look at it so and I'm going to do that because for yeah. someone who was not, I mean, I took my parents out because they wanted to see it. I, that just was not an interest to me. It is fascinating. I mean, it, we need to know what operates our city, what our utilities are. It is an amazing piece of property, and, and it's great. So please come out. Come see yeah. it. We are so lucky to have it. Yeah. yeah. And there will be plenty of parking, correct? Plenty. Plenty of parking. Okay. Or you can ride your bicycle. <laughs> your fireworks <laughs> <laughs> trying to get us to that platform. No fireworks. <laughs> I think we say bicycle like 10 times in a meeting. I think it helps us. <laughs> okay. Anything else? No. May I adjourn this meeting? Motion to adjourn. May I ask for a motion to adjourn this meeting? <laughs> motion to adjourn. Second. Motion and a second to adjourn the Stillwater Utility Authority meeting. Please vote. And that passes four to zero. I would like to call the Stillwater Economic Development Authority regular meeting to order. September 12th. Consent docket. One item on the consent docket. Motion to approve the consent docket. Second. Motion and a second to approve the consent docket. Please vote. We're down to general orders, and we are excited to hear the Visit Stillwater annual report. Mr. McNichol. And that report will be given by Christy Morrison, CEO of Visit Stillwater. Thank you very much. 
Trustees, we appreciate the opportunity to be here. I uh, would like to first of all introduce the team. You might have recognized us. <laughs> We didn't accidentally all wear the same shirt today, but uh, this is the Visits to Water team. I, I love the opportunity to address you this evening because I think what happens is we spend so much of our time doing everything we can to make everybody else look really good, to make sure we have trouble-free, successful events, that we never really get the opportunity or take the time to brag a little bit about what we do throughout the year. So we're excited about that, and it, obviously it's due to the whole team. We uh, love that you uh, opened up some time in your schedules to sit down and talk with us about the, the written report that we submitted several weeks ago. I really enjoy those conversations. I think that you know that there's nothing I like in the world more than to talk extensively about destination marketing. So it's fun to have the opportunity to, in addition to showing you all the facts and the figures and the numbers and the things that people may not always find all that interesting, although we do. I think it's the visuals that kind of bring to focus where all the numbers come from. So um, what we do mainly, I, I, was, I would say, is uh, all the efforts that we put forth in visitor development, I think, contributes to our quality of life. So I want to make sure that I get this working correctly. Is it going up? No. There we go. Course nobody wants to probably see that, huh? You gonna come help me here? This is a uh, Kylie Vincent, who I was about to have a choking fit and said she could just do this, and she told me she'd never speak to me again. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I uh, <clears throat> maintained. So anyway, we're excited about contributing to the quality of life of Stillwater. Uh, when you call our office, obviously what we're going to say anytime is it's a great day to visit Stillwater, Oklahoma. And in fact, over the past year, it's been a great year to visit America's friendliest college town. And one of the ways we do that is one of our greatest accomplishments over the last year is our brand new website that we uh, developed. We actually maintain all of that content in-house that allows us to constantly and continually update it daily, sometimes multiple times per day, in particular events that are going on downtown. Uh, our media partners allow us to know so many things about what's going on in downtown or throughout, I'm sorry, the entire community. Obviously radio, print, Stillwater Living Magazine, the TV, we also have state media that's really been helping us out a lot lately. We participated in road tripping that allowed us to promote fall and winter events that are coming up. At KOCO TV uh, attended Football 101 with us. Um, it was so fun. Mar Marky Martin attended along with a couple other blog um, travel writers and bloggers. This is Kylie telling everybody about what we're doing. These are some of the uh, blog posts or the media posts on social media, which was so helpful to us over just a two two. Uh, day period of time. However, the Visit Still Water team has actually added 849 content pieces to our social media. Do a lot of trade shows. Why would you not want to go to a community that looks so fun and colorful as that? We definitely get a lot of attention when we go out and about and promote Stillwater. One of the things we promote a lot is uh, obviously the Wrestling Hall of Fame and Museum, but because of the $3.8 million renovations, it's going to be a primary attraction for us to promote, really regardless of the market. What's neat is when we have the ability to combine several different events into one promotion, Crazy Days we made sure this year. It was in conjunction with uh, the Big Three Field Days at OSU, and you have 1,500 students. You want them the chance to meet and to, uh, to shop. <laughs> we love this event. This is the Mid-Continent Kennel Show, and we also have the Tulsa Kennel Club that's now meeting at the Payne County Expo Center. And just to so, show the versatility of those facilities, we, this is the second year we've hosted the Galvey Junior Nationals as well as some of the region's archery pro-am events all occurring out at uh, the Payne County Expo Center. In addition, what a class act we have out at Karsten Creek, the American Junior Golf Association Ping Invita Invitational. Great event, not only nationally, but international exposure. We frankly had no idea what Coach's Cabana was. They contacted us, so we contacted some of our partners, and they now have a home at Eskimo Joe's where you can watch home and away games with some of our previous coaching staff and players. Great opportunity there. Uh, our Visitor Information Center, to my knowledge, is still the only one that's that extensive that's open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The young man in the middle was celebrating his birthday, so we gave him all kinds of information, and of course, one publication is the Visitor Guide. We distribute 70,000 of those annually 
Uh, that's done all completely in-house, the advertising as well as the content layout and design. This is a monthly postcard that we send to all of our partners. We want them to know when there's going to be spikes in visitor development. Does this no good to bring in a lot of visitors when they don't have a great experience so it helps them plan their staffing needs accordingly? Our very own Melissa. Uh, this is a, a digital marketing campaign where we actually received 3,500 requests specific to Stillwater. So we sent them the visitor guide as well as uh, information about Fly Stillwater OK. Great opportunity to get the word out. We're very, very in tune with best practices. We've brought in this past year some of the best and well-known experts in destination marketing. Want to make sure that our partners as well as our staff are always up to date. And of course, we were really excited to partner with the Stillwater Regional Airport to provide uh, or to really enhance the visitor experience once folks get into our community. So we helped with the design of five different walls as well as two visitor information centers in the inbound and the outbound terminals. Uh, it's a great opportunity to tell what we have in Stillwater, but reasons to come back to Stillwater as well. And of course, one of those is the all aboard program that's coming up where we're all aboard could actually be all aboard a plane or a train. <laughs> And then combine that with the Polar Express, Santa Claus, uh, carriage rides, and whether you, you may not know that we actually have secured reindeer who will be, that who, that will be in town. So it's going to be a neat opportunity. The owner actually has an 18th century sleigh that he's going to bring as well. So that's going to make for some, some additional really neat Christmas um, pictures and opportunities for the family. And, Probably, I would guess, a majority of people being around a reindeer, reindeer for the first time in their lives. So we're excited about that. So in the, in the beginning when I said that the, um, everything that we do really enhances the, the quality of life here in Stillwater, I would, I would say as a major component of economic development efforts for Stillwater that maybe we are a quality of life organization that um, through visitor development, we're able to reach our mission, but is the quality of life things that obviously helps us sell our community. And uh, I was going to mention that obviously two of our major partners are Oklahoma State University and, um, and I can't believe I'm gonna show this, but I'm going to. Oklahoma State University and Eskimo Joe's, and when they did their partnership t-shirt, we're thinking, what can we do? Um, going right into best practices, everybody says it's now not only the written word and not the visual, but now it's more into the video. So we produced a video that uh, we thought everybody would enjoy seeing, if I can get it to work. Maybe it's not gonna, it kind of stalled out on us earlier, so we're not sure if it's gonna go for us. Maybe not. Hold on. No. Oh well, that's okay. If I would encourage you, and I know most of you already do follow us on social media, go to visitstillwater.org and pull up the video. And basically, poor Nicole, I tackled her. She, I warned her, but it was coming. And so we had all of the t-shirts there. We jumped in and grabbed them. And now we actually have people that we've never met across the country saying, okay, what are you going to do next? What are you going to do next? Because on National um, Banana Split Day, we also promoted an Oklahoma grown business in the Brahms Banana Split. So as you come up with ideas, let us know because those are the little tidbits that make people think and know and kind of visualize a little bit more about America's friendliest college town and gives them more reason to come to our community. So that was basically that much information in a few minutes of visuals. Oh, I thought they were going to stand up and applaud or something. Will you introduce, <laughs> your, your, will you introduce all them? Per, oh, yeah, sure. Oh, great. Now watch me forget. Kylie Vincent, Vice President. She's been with us for quite some time. Nicole Horn, recently, she just recently got married, so she's been messing with me on her, excuse me, on her last name. Melissa Davenport has been here a long time. She actually runs the office and bosses us around all day long. And Kara Gray, she's the Director of Marketing, has done just a fantastic job and has a lot of knowledge in content and uh, content development and actually research and pulling out those numbers and making sure what we're doing is a good return on investment. Well, Christy, I wanted to first of all thank you and thank your team for your enthusiasm and the report was great as far as numbers, but I think what I want to commend you on is the diversity of things that you bring to this town or have connections to, the things that I didn't even know we did in the Expo Center and other places. So thank you for thinking broadly and bringing these diverse things into our town. And, and you're right, we are the friendliest town. So um, appreciate it. Thank you. Our pleasure. Thank you. I also want to thank you. Um, Christy and I serve on a, is it called Market Stillwater? That's correct. I don't even know. And Christy heads it up. And 
the greatest thing I like about you and your team is that it's not about visit Stillwater. It's about Stillwater. And that's so evident when we're in that meeting together that you always ask, how can we help you or what can we do more to promote this? It's not, you know, what, what can we, you know? And so I just, I think so much of your organization, I've been on council now almost three years and I really have seen a difference come from because of you guys, in my opinion. And so I appreciate it. I loved this, um, packet information It's 41 pages. I read it. I, I think it was great. Um, I love listening to you on the radio. I think it's funny. I can't remember who was talking about the reindeer on the radio, if it, they were going to be live. Was it? It was Kylie, because Steve said, it's, is it live? Or she said live reindeer, and Steve said, was it going to be dead reindeer? Or so I just... I, well, we can, we've been saying that because we didn't realize this, but eight out of 10 people you ask don't think that reindeer, they think they're mystical creatures. They don't know that they're real. And then they I think are, they it got fly. into the unicorn Do what? discussion. They can fly. Yeah. Well, yeah. And we just learned as well, did you know that female reindeer also have antlers? Uh, the only on the radio. That's true. Yeah. So, but well, thank then. you so much to you yeah. and your staff and uh, everything you do for Stillwater. <laughs> and uh, I, I think it's great what you've done with the airport, working with the city on that. Um, I think we've got a lot of exciting things happening in Stillwater. And I think we have some great people helping to make Stillwater grow and be a place. And I want to put my idea on the record. I want to do a day at the Capitol to market Stillwater and to talk about all the great things we're doing in Stillwater. So I told Chrissy that. Now it's out in the public. So oh. there you go. <laughs> no, we've actually kind of already asked around for you. Okay. I, well, go, go ahead. ahead. Oh, I, I always enjoy talking to Christy, and it and it what always starts out is I'll meet with you for half an hour, <laughs> and then like an hour and a half later, um, Christy's enthousi your enthusiasm and uh, is just um, contagious, and um, I catch it, and obviously clearly other people catch it and uh, come to our great city. Thank because you. Of you. I'm going to ask you a question. Okay, go for it. <laughs> uh, great work. Thanks for the report. Um, you guys definitely are doing a, a ton of stuff out there to, to get Stillwater out and uh, the word out and, and get people into town. So uh, I certainly appreciate all of the, the info about your activities and what you guys have been doing. Um, I, I would like, I mean, not necessarily hard questions, but what, what do you see um, for us uh, that, that we should know as the limitations that you find in, in trying to market Stillwater? What, what, what do we need to be doing more of or better or what, what should we be doing to help you guys bring people to Stillwater to visit? Oh no, I appreciate that. Uh, I can't believe I'm about to go into year 21 in this position and when we first started the concern and the challenges were uh, the first I think 12 years of the job we had 769 hotel rooms and we had very limited hotel space and we had no direct air service and I will tell you we've been to three shows in in the last uh, four weeks and it was the most amazing thing ever to watch people's face to say and you can now fly directly into Stillwater and just we came back so re-energized re um, I said Probably back in, I think, 2012 when I first started working with Gary on this, that this would be the biggest game changer in my career. So if you look at it, we have substantially more hotel room inventory now. We have great direct air service. One of the challenges we still have is available meeting space. We have some really great, really impressive meeting space in town that's very rarely uh, available and it's certainly not available for general sessions breakout sessions meal functions so it's uh, some versatile meeting space that would help us out a lot because uh, we can get people here and we can house them here it's going to be a challenge to have a location for them to meet here cool. what's next What's the next big thing? Well, <laughs> well, we're really excited about the air service because that completely changes the complexity of our marketing plan. Um, and also, I will tell you, when, when we first started, it was kind of crickets in the, in the summertime, in probably November, December, January. And now summer is extremely busy. It's a different kind of busy than it is in August when the students come back. Our only kind of slow times right now are really the end of November into December, 1st of January. <laughs> 
And now with the potential of the Polar Express and branding all of the events together, because we truly have people calling now saying, well, what else is going on in Stillwater so that we can come in on a weekend where we can stay longer, not just come in for the Polar Express, but to come in and stay longer, I think that we have the opportunity to con continually and completely piggyback all of that and add it all together. And so when we have the uh, potential of 62,000 passengers on the Polar Express, meaning additional people through town, attending events, shopping in our stores and restaurants, I mean, that's huge for us. So I really look forward to seeing those sales tax numbers. I know you guys watch and monitor. I, uh, I'm going to guesstimate that those are going to go up pr pretty good by January, February. Right. Sounds wonderful. Thank you very much Thank for you. your report. And thank you for being here, all of you. I, don't know, I, was, I was expecting some sort of a, a choreographed routine of some kind with the outfit. <laughs> Do you have one? Should we add that to the report next year? Yes. Okay. Yes, please do. I want to see the video. Oh, it's I was built good. up for the it's video. Good. It's good to <laughs> you. Okay, I think we are down to miscellaneous items from General Counsel. I think you're poor, man. General Manager Nickel, McNichol. I think people after that report would be interested to know, and I want to uh, send out uh, kudos not only to uh, Visit Stillwater, but to Sherry Fletcher and her team and Kyle Ray. I think people would be very interested to know is that as of the 9th of September, the 9th, we already had 3,000 bookings for the month of September uh, on American Airlines. So um, there could be, um, there could be um, many more still in September. So we're very excited about that. Uh, great marketing plan. They continue to work on that. So uh, uh, we're very pleased about that. And um, uh, the other item is unfortunate uh, would like to report the passing of Chuck Hopkins mm -hmm. former city councilor on uh, Saturday afternoon and uh, services I believe two o'clock Thursday yes mr. Hopkins served the city well he did for many years he did as councilor and vice mayor right um, Trustees. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion and a second to adjourn the Stillwater Economic Development Authority regular meeting. Please vote. And that passes four to zero. We will re unrecess. I'll reconvene. Unrecess. Reconvene the regular um, Stillwater <laughs> City Council meeting, and we'll go to executive session. Motion to enter executive session. <laughs> After someone makes a motion, and we vote on it. <laughs> a motion to go to executive session. Second. Motion a second to go to executive session. Please vote. And that passes four to zero.